Hi everyone, how are you doing? Hope everyone's having a good day. Um, I think it's going to be a quiet one today, but that's not necessarily bad. Plenty of opportunity for me to talk. And if, if you want to sort of ask very specific questions, plenty of opportunity to respond to it. Hope you're all doing well. It's kind of been very sort of dark and sunny in random intervals today, which has been interesting because it's been quite difficult to plan whether I should have a light on or not on or whatever else. Uh, I do have some topics prepared for today, which is I think it's going to be very important given how quiet it is. And there's lots of things that's been going with quite interesting and some sort of topics and questions that have cropped up through discussions with people, arguments with people, a little bit of drama, all sorts of things about that. There's also some updates on uh, Charlie and Kip specifically because uh, things have been going quite well with them. And it's been really, really interesting to see how things have been going with them. Um, so I think... I'm going to start with topics. I'll also, don't forget, I'll be getting the birds out as usual, at least Pickles and Scampi throughout this. Um, maybe the boys as well, because they've been quite relaxed and it'd be quite nice to just have them relaxing in the background for you to look at instead of me while I'm talking away. But that'll be a bit later on. So let's start off with the first topic, and that's pellets. So let's start with the drama behind the pellets as well. Hi, Laura. Welcome. And welcome everyone who's joining now. Hi, welcome to the live stream. Hi, Pinus Tales, welcome. Nice to see you. So let's start with a pellet drama. So there's two bits to this. The first bit is drama that's occurred recently. And the second one is a question, and I think a very valid question regarding pellets. Not bashing them, not like, um, like basically just an interesting question. So the first bit is about drama. So Sophie got a message recently. Uh, oh, sorry, she's got a comment recently, one of her old pellet videos, really old one. It was really like harsh and it was just like condescending and patronizing. And obviously, like she was like, "What?" So she, I'm not going to name name names of it. You popping as well? I'm not going to name names of it because I feel it's unprofessional. But yeah, it was it was really funny because it called into question her experience. It called into question not really my experience because they weren't really addressing me. And it's like, well, what does this person know about Sophie's experience? Why would you attack someone who's an influencer who doesn't actually um, advise against these particular brand of pellets, but more? that they should be eaten in moderation. And why would you attack that? I thought it was very, very silly. I just um, had a follow-up comment as well. Somebody going for the pit brand that I was recommending. Oh. So let me just... Scooting it over. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's something going on behind the scenes. I don't know why people are coming for me and why brands think it is at all professional to be so rude. Antagonistic, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's fine. So I'll tell you about that later. But yeah, there's clearly something going on. Some people attacking... Um, the brand that we do recommend uh, and coming for me because I think that the brand that you recommend is good. So it's all very weird. I don't know what's going on, why someone hates me. <laughs> I don't think they hate you necessarily. I think it's just a, a, a shift in opinions and people are feeling like they're kind of like attacked when in reality, you know, what we, me and you do and other people do is more just trying to advise the facts, you know, based on what, what modern science is saying based on the lack of information, based on the fact that most of this stuff is tested on chickens, and based on the fact that me and Sophie don't say that you can't feed pellets, it's just, it should be done in moderation extreme, and there are better ways you can feed your bird. And based on the fact that no pellet can be appropriate for nearly 400 species of wild Yeah, parrots. you can't, you can't just, <laughs> like, everyone has a different diet, dietary requirements, you know, different animals do, so how can a pellet be effective again for every single different animal when some come from Australia, some come from Africa, some come from South America? You know, it's not going to work because they're from different ecosystems. They're going to have different dietary requirements. It just doesn't work. And it's very, very silly. Um, I had another thought on that, but I lost it because I, I was talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know why this particular brand has decided Oh, that was the other so thing. Rude. So the, the, the brand also stated they're not a pellet. They're Even, not a pellet. But if, they are effectively a pellet, but they're not a pellet. If you ask 100 bird owners who are aware of pellets to name some brands, this would be probably one of the first ones they say. Um, I have never, neither of us have ever publicly said, do not feed this brand. Um, In fact, you know, I, I, I'm probably going to stop doing it now. I don't know if it's going to be harsh or not, but I tend to say with this particular brand, they're second best and that you can because there are there is some science behind it, at least. It has been um, formulated with some thought behind it rather than just let's slap some sugar in and just wheel it out you know so you know uh, yeah it was very odd and they've basically lost recommendations now anyone who has asked me who this brand is privately via dm instagram whatever emails i have shown them the screenshot i'm not going to publicly start drama that's what they did um but ultimately they put this comment on a public forum so for anyone who wants to see it i'm sharing it with people 
Um, and we are we will no longer buy anything from these people because they've been so incredibly rude and unprofessional. Mm -hmm. so yeah, well, but they've lost some them. customers from us, if nothing and else. Plenty of people who have seen the screenshot said they won't buy from them as well. So it's a really, really stupid PR situation for them. And I hope they learn from it and stop being so rude. But I think the comment I got just now, which I'll show you about later, probably has something to do with it. But here we go. Hi, mum. My mum's here. Hello, <laughs> hello, my Mac as well. Mom. Hello, Amy. <laughs> Welcome, all of you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so what I'll do is I'll we'll address this question together, maybe then I'll talk about the next topic. Leave, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's your life. So lemon, anyway. lemon rice question. What tips do you have for encouraging your clients to avoid chewing computers, keyboards, mice while working from home? That kind of actually leads onto a topic later. I'll, I'll talk about biting. It's not, it's not just biting us. It's biting other objects we don't really like. So just quickly to address your question directly now, before we go on to it later, China's going to be very noisy now because Sophie's in here as well. Um, that's what sometimes why I don't like to say in the room when we're live streaming. So, um, yeah, so avoid chewing. So redirection is your best uh, bet. Don't make a big fuss over it, which again leads into the topic later. Don't like immediately take them away because it becomes a game almost. So, you know, they get on a keyboard and you're like trying to work and you're like, right, get off. Take them away. You reward them elsewhere. Try and make it more of a smooth transition. You take them elsewhere. You ask for something first and then you reward them. Uh, give them more things to do. Like we did trial it, but it didn't really work for it. Well, having something on desk, we had to put a foraging tray on my desk, but stuff like that. And again, this will lead into a topic later. So I'll try and cover it a bit more in depth later on. Yeah. And sometimes if you find that after, I don't know, an hour, your bird is just being absolute pest. They want to know what you're doing and um, are preventing you from doing your work or whatever. It's okay for them to be in the cage for a little bit or their safe space, bird room, maybe whatever, and to have some independent play. There's nothing wrong with that. If you find that after a certain period of time, your bird's like, okay, now I need to be up in your business. It's okay for them to go and have their own independent time so you can actually do what you need to do because we have to live our lives as well. Exactly. It's very true. Um, yeah. So that's basically the truth of it. You know, it, it comes from the myth of birds having to be out all the time. More, more time out the better but sometimes they do have to go back in a cage and they have to be happy in there and that space would be really really nice for them you know they should want to be well not always want to be because they probably prefer to be with us and the flock members but they should be happy being in there and content doing it cool so so i'm gonna go okay. hopefully gonna Char's be, not gonna scream i'm gonna be on the chat so i'll see you guys in the chat okay might pop back in later but um so with regards to pellets the comment and some other things i've read recently it also it sort of led to a an interesting question that I thought would be worth discussing a little bit in a live stream. No problem, Lemon Rice. It's basically what we're here for. So in the comment, and also something I've seen recently elsewhere, is that certain types of pellets have an appearance or a lack of appearance. So like they're either coloured or not coloured because of us, because they appeal to us. So for example, you have certain pellet brands that have bright colours. Some advertise that they appeal to birds, some that they don't, and it's quite a confused mess. So the question I was interested in sort of discussing was how important is a pellet's appearance to um, a parrot when they're selecting food? You have some pellets that look identical to each other. So in my mind, I feel that looks boring, especially as when you look at parrots, it seems that sight is a very important factor when they're selecting food initially. You know, they'll, they'll often rely on their sight and then they will probably rely on texture and how it feels, maybe then taste, probably not smell. You know, it's in that sort of order. So you have sight, texture, taste. So if sight is so important to our parrots, then if a pellet's all the same color and it's very bland and boring looking, is that actually capitalizing on that? And that is, is that compromising their nutritional enrichment, their enjoyment of eating stuff and selecting it? But conversely, parrots see in a completely different way to us. So would these pellets look completely different to them, even the bland ones and boring ones? Would they look more appealing to them? And if that's the case, how would they look, you know? And I don't think there's ever been really any proper studies in how they would perceive a pellet. And why would there be? You know, it's not a very interesting topic to most people. I think it is to me, because I find interesting how they select their food anyway. It was very interesting. We had um we used sunflower seeds for training trees, and we had some which were kind of smaller, they look pretty much the same. They're a hole, so they're out of the shell. And none of the conyers really enjoyed them. They would pick them up and they'll throw them, or they'll just ignore them and go for hemp seeds instead. We then replaced those sunflower seeds with um, some bigger ones from another brand, from another Whole Foods store, and suddenly they loved them again. So was there something they were perceiving visually in those sunflower seeds that made them reject them? And would that apply to pellets as well? And I find the question fascinating. Um, it's something I'm going to ask other people as well. Uh, I'm going to ask Jason about other people just to try and get some opinions on it. Because, yeah... <laughs> 
And then if you've got pellets, like say we talk about the bland ones, we talk about the pellets that are quite brightly coloured. Are they like neon lights to parrots? Are they like, wow, amazing? Or are they for the human human like um, spectrum as well? Do they just look bland as well to parrots? I don't know. What would you guys say about it? I know it's not too many of you guys, but if you've got any opinions on this question, feel free to drop in, drop in the chat because I'd be interested in hearing your opinion on it as well. Because for me... Personally, I think a bland pellet looks bland to us. We only look slightly better to a parrot. And uh, this, again, this is just my opinion, by the way, not scientific fact. So those pellets won't look that much appealing, regardless of what people say. So therefore, they may not be very interesting to eat. Uh, and the, the bright ones are going to be like neon to them. So I don't know if that's going to be very good either. And if they have pellets like that, would they naturally just not eat other foods because they're offered because they're so amazing? And also if they're like coloured as well and flavoured with sugar, I mean, it's like a child selecting stuff, you know, what are they going to go for? The brightly, most brightly coloured and the best flavour and texture. And it's just, it confuses me why there seems to be a bit of a divide on, not, not even divide, like just some, some pellet brands say, oh, it doesn't matter what they look like. Some pellet brands say you do. Some pellets say just like, Get your facts straight, guys, you know, um, but they're not pellets, remember, not all pellets. So let's have a look at what I've seen a couple of comments here. So let's have a look. Uh, two very good comments immediately, actually. So Mr. Teeny, I think it's interesting. Maybe someone should make, do a proper study about it. I would love people to do a proper study. But Klaus's comment, maybe I can do something about it. Maybe I can do the first few steps of a study. Uh, have you tried using a UV light? Do some flowers look different? I have not. But... If I can get a cheap one, this is something I'm going to try, and I'll probably put it in a video for you guys as well. Um, if I don't write it down, I have to get Sophie to remind me because I think that's an awesome idea. It all does depend on how much they cost. I would absolutely love to do a UV light study and just look how much thing. Great idea, both of you. Um, I'm, I'm, I hope you don't mind me stealing it because I will um, try and do that video for you guys. As long as UV light isn't horrendously expensive because then I'll be like, maybe not. And I'll probably try and get someone else to do it. Um, less and more Voltron. Um, thank you very much. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting anything like this today. So really, really thank you. And I love the little flying pair as well. I do love the little emojis. I think they're adorable. So thank you very much. First naughty of the day, maybe the last, but it's all good. Don't apologize for being late. Have, happy to have you. And you sort of came in with a bang as well there. So Lemon Rice, my Konya loves anything resembling a sea. This includes grains of sand sometimes. So maybe it's a visual thing. Maybe they're assuming that those little bits look like seeds. Again, that would be almost a separate study. Oh, my goodness. Um, I somehow need to do uh, catch up on my scientific degree stuff and sort of be able to do this stuff. Uh, Lemon Rice, I, I think it would make an awesome video. Uh, and I think it's something that's well worth doing. So I'm going to try and do it. So Pines, from personal experience, don't care what a pellet looks like. I gave them a choice of colored pellets and plain pellets, and they chose the plain pellets because they recognized them. So is it a familiarity thing as well? So that's a whole nother level as well. So um, Pines, did you introduce the uh, plain pellets before you introduced the colored pellets? Had they eaten them for a long period before they were given the colored pellets, or were they roughly the same sort of time? Um, because that would be very interesting to know whether familiarity plays a part in it, you know? You could, goodness, this topic opening up, it's just opening up a whole um, avenue. For example, when you're having birds winged, um, a lot of birds are winged on millet. Um, I've seen conyers that people do it on conyers, although now I'm, I'm noticing a few more responsible readers are starting to wean them onto uh, fruit and veg, which is awesome. But let's take cockatiels or budgies, for example. Most of them are weaned onto millet. So then millet becomes amazing as a food, uh, ultimate treat food. But is it an ultimate treat food because it's millet and it's really, really nice, or is it because they had that when they were little and that's what makes it so amazingly appealing because it's familiar and it's like, wow, I had this when I was little. This is the best food. I recognize it. I'm going to just keep on eating it. It's really interesting. If they're not expensive, um, then I will look into it because I think it'd be absolutely fascinating to do. I'll have to see how it comes out on camera. So maybe, well, basically, we'll just see what I can do. Uh, partners' tails. They've been eating the plain pellets, more colored pellets, and she's colored pellets and didn't recognize them as food. So again, there's this recognition thing, this familiarity thing. And maybe the pellets that are not pellets play into that because some of them are small and seed shaped. But again, you still have this question of when they're introduced and if they're introduced repeatedly. Uh, I've actually got to try it. I am reintroduced to plain pellets. They prefer the plain pellets. Again, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, were the colorful ones sugar? Uh, did they have lots of sugar in them? 
that's another question I'll, I'll be interested in. And also, what are their so? Sorry to ask lots of questions. I suppose you're supposed to be asking me questions, but I find this fascinating. What would you say your uh, pioneers? What would you say your pioneers' favourite foods are? Like the top couple of foods they they have uh, are just out of interest in. Lemon rice. My Konya changes her preference for pellets for the day by the day. Sorry, I mix Tops and Harrison's pellets for foraging meals, and sometimes she'll eat both, and sometimes only one or two. It is interesting. Maybe it depends on their mood. Maybe it depends on what's happening that day. Um, when maybe it's just what she feels she needs. Could there be some selection going on there that sh she inherently knows that she wants something? So, for example, one has a fire, a fire, higher fat content, whereas the other one has other sort of things they want. Uh, it, it's the, it's a, a big topic. I didn't realize how big a topic it was. You guys are inspiring me, to be honest, rather than, well, it should be me doing the other way around, but you guys are inspiring me right now. They did contain sugar, she started using less. Well, that's obviously good, because sugar's no good for our parrots, just, just use the way it makes them behave most of the time. Welcome, Carrie. Haven't um, seen you a little while, so it's nice to see you. Um, welcome. I've, we've just been discussing pellets. So I opened up with a topic on the drama, which you'd probably be familiar about. Um, of via Discord, and then it sort of expanded into this massive topic, which I started about um, how pellets appear and why parrots will select certain foods, um, and how pellets would look like. What, what would they look like to a parrot, and you know what's most most important for parrots when selecting their foods? I personally think it is sight first, then it's texture, then it's taste. Although I think those second two maybe you can switch them around depending on your parrot and their taste. Because a conya taste seems to be a big thing, whereas for a cockatiel, it seems to be less. Right, so what do they like? Uh, almonds, pine nuts, sweet corn, peas, grapes, strawberries, carrots. That's quite a big mix. So they like their high-fat nuts. They seem to like their high-protein peas. And they also like their, um, uh, their like sweet natural flavors, like grapes and strawberries. It's nice that there's grapes and strawberries because they're slightly lower sugar than other fruits. So that's kind of cool as well. It's interesting. Uh, brilliant thought that their pellet choice today might be based on body's needs. It could be. Again, there's just not enough research on this sort of thing when it comes to parrots. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Most of pellet research, especially when it comes to biology, is done on chickens, not on parrots. And that is something really, really important to remember when you're seeing a lot of pellet research. And I would love to see some proper pellet research done on parrots and their biology, but it's very hard to find. And I think if it exists, it's probably not open to the public domain. Uh, again, I'd love, if I'm wrong there, please do correct me because I'll be interested in reading it. And so would Sophie, I'm sure. And so would a lot of people. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. But so I probably, I'll be talking about pellets for um, almost 15 minutes now. So I should probably move on in a second. So let's just uh, catch up on things. I mean, Pioneer's Tales, how awesome is that? Ours are the same. They will, we do provide tops occasionally, which you'll probably see in the boxing just as an extra for them, basically, you know, but they will choose their fruit uh, and veg over pellets and then seed after that. So welcome everyone who's joined. Sean, I'll, let's just address your question, then we'll go on to the biting topic of the day. And welcome, Deshana. Um, it's welcome to the live stream and chatting. So, hey there, recently got a cockatiel. Don't know male or female, but how do I know once the bird completely, tr completely trusts me? Still bites whenever something, but not strong. Thanks in advance. So cockatiels are one of those parrots that will either bite you mega hard if they hate you. If they're not biting you hard, it tends to be a warning, and that tends to be starting to signs of trust. You know, they're telling you off basically. They're just saying, "I'm not really comfortable with this." They're nibbling you. Even chip and fish will nibble me occasionally, especially when they're getting pets to tell me off if I'm not doing it right. So how will you know when they trust you? I think the biggest signs of trust in a cockatiel. I think that's where I did a video about this a while back is when they're happy to sit on you and fluff up and relax. Generally, that's a big sign of trust for a cockatiel. They'll sit on you, they'll fluff up, they'll relax, they'll be happy to be in your company and you'll be moving around. Um, they'll happily step up on you regularly. And don't forget to reinforce your, um, your C, sorry, do positive reinforcement all through the bonding process. And generally, they'll be just happy to be around you and you will see less stress behaviours and less sort of fear responses. Heart wings is a yes or no answer, by the way, for that. So heart wings, yes, for males, you can. it can be a sign of trust that they're happier in the environment because they're willing to display and sing, but it can also be a hormonal behaviour and a territorial behaviour with some cockatiels. Chip will display his wings if he's stressed, and you can even see cockatiels hiss and spread their wings out. So it's careful to look at it in context with a cockatiel's behaviour. I know a lot about cockatiels, uh, I'm ashamed to say, because I love them so much, they're adorable. So there are some nuances to how they will display heart wings. Uh, so yeah, just bear that in mind. So yes, basically the signs of trust will be just basically being happier around you. 
So Lemon Rice, he's pellets primary foraging. Uh, yeah, exactly. So your pellets are all right for that. You know, they're quite useful for that purpose, you know, having them in the bowl um, overnight. Don't forget to put other stuff in there as well. You know, why not? If, you know, is it mean so if you don't say never use pellets? You know, if you have them as a small proportion, it's perfectly okay. You know, it's just like if we eat a bit of stuff that's not ideal, it's okay. But mix, diversify a bit. Have pellets with other stuff, you know, maybe some um, freeze-dried veggies or herbs, spices, maybe a little bit of seed in there. Just to give them lots of things, grains, all sorts, to give them a little bit of a mixture. Uh, no worries, Sean. Happy to respond to questions. That's part of the reason why I'm here. So let's move on to biting. So let me just have a look at my notes quickly here. Oh, yes, there's two subtopics here. The first one we've already sort of asked a little bit for a question, which is biting other objects, because people talk about a lot about biting us, but there's a lot of, uh, of stuff they bite, which isn't us, which isn't ideal. So I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, biting other objects in the house isn't ideal because sometimes they're unsafe for them. Sometimes it's annoying for us. For example, we're working or sometimes it causes damage to the house, which we do not want. For example, the boys up on the curtain rail chewing it to bits, which we don't really find ideal. So again, how do you dissuade your, your parrots from doing it? So the, my first tip for dissuading your parrot from biting things they shouldn't is do not make a big stink over it. You make a big fuss, that's going to reinforce it for some parrots, and they're going to get um, a lot more excited about it, and it's going to become a game almost. So if you're going to deal with it, just be like, okay, casually stop them from doing it. Redirect them if you can. So maybe redirect them onto a target or something, lead them away, give them a reward. Or just... Basically, you follow almost like a biting protocol where you take them away from the bit they're chewing they shouldn't do because it's dangerous for you, or for them, sorry, or um, distracting you. Pop them somewhere else that's fairly neutral in your house. We can use one on the backs of the chairs, not this one because it's their training one. And then give them five seconds. Give them an opportunity to earn something. So a target, a behavior. Again, you're breaking that association between doing that naughty thing and stopping it from becoming a game where you're back and forth. And we made a mistake with them on the curtain rail became a game so they'll start chewing it whenever they want it to come down and can be able to fly or they just enjoyed the whole process of it so those you those no bag of fuss use biting protocol so and redirect them the other thing and it's really important that we often miss is giving them something else to do so if they're out and they're with us they can be kind of bored you know they want to be with us but they want to be involved with what we're doing and they're kind of bored so that's why they're doing it so sometimes having like even a little foraging square on your desk and filling it with some treats while you're doing important work is really important because they'll be busy with that foraging square rather than distracting you from the work you're done, you're doing, sorry. And it's really important that they have something to do. And it's a lot of fun. The final option is actually just to put them back in a cage for a while. You know, as we said right at the start of this, the cage should not be a punishment. It should be somewhere fun. It should be somewhere good to be. And being out, the more they're out, the better. Really important. But they can have in cage time as well especially when you're doing important work so you have to live your life and you have to earn money especially with the situation as it is in the world right now you know we all need to make our cash so sometimes the birds will have to go in the cage and your next question will probably be what if they start screaming will they start misbehaving again activities in there uh redirection if you can spare the time for it a bit of training condition calm is very useful for in the cage time as well but then you have to start doing some screaming work which will probably be either watch a video or i'll have to do it in a future live but yeah so that's the first part of biting. So let's catch up with a chat a little uh, briefly here. Uh, Momak, my cocks lost his play hot wings at my friend while singing and screaming him. Yeah, they do love they do love to get their heart wings out. So uh, they they the sorry if I mispronounced that. Harrison's bird food bird foods have done feeding trials with their pellets on parrots, not chickens. So one part of that I'll disagree with. The second part I will agree with. They have done their feeding trials on chickens as well, and that's what they're based on. They may have done some uh, trials on parrots. But I have yet to see them and I'd like to see them um, and I'd like to see rather than anecdotal trials or very small sample sizes, but big sample sizes and looking at it over a period, a long period, rather than just a very short period. Um, again, we've kind of talked about pellets, so I want to kind of move on from there. But yeah, just to address that comment, because I know for a fact they have on chickens as well. So, yeah, uh, Carrie, Twig went through a period where he was biting my hand hard when I'd feed him through the hardest part of his molt. He had a notable change of personality during molt. Also very important, yes, um, cockatiels, well, most parrots can get very grumpy during molting. You know, it's it's very irritating, but lots of pin feathers. The slightest touch can be irritating. They want us to help them with that molt, so they want us to pet them as we normally would, but sometimes we do it wrong, and then they'll lash out. So that's just a normal part of molting, and also it's tiring. You need to support their body with a bit of extra protein because molting is stressful for parrots, and um, it's really important. So it's very very good point there. So the second part of biting, 
uh, again, this come up this come up for a discussion recently, which I found quite interesting. And that is, uh, wh why do we recommend not reacting to parrots when they bite? Now, this is through proven behavioral science. Before anyone argues with me about it, by the way, this is tried and tested over a lot decades of of like trial and trial and error with animal trainers and stuff. We don't react because that is the best way of preventing further biting, and it's proven. So people ask me. So why is, doesn't it work, work the same way with parrots? You know, say, for example, Charlie was to nibble Olive and Olive would squeal and she'll tell him off. So that would basically tell Charlie to stop biting Olive. Why does that work for us? Why, could, why shouldn't we react and tell our parrots that, no, this is bad. You can't do this anymore. You know, we're part of the flock. Well, the biggest, the most obvious answer to that is I'm not a parrot. I don't speak parrot. I can't communicate um to charlie just charlie for example he's very good recently i can't communicate to charlie to stop biting me through squealing at him or making a big stink he doesn't understand the word no he doesn't word understand the word ah he doesn't word they understand swearing none of that is anything to him all of that is just reaction he's just getting reaction from me i don't speak parrot he doesn't speak human so you know and maybe over time you can establish that dialogue but again it's much quicker to do the other methods of controlling biting the other thing as well is when they're biting each other or beaking each other, they have a layer of feathers. So they may do that to warn or uh, communicate something with us straight onto our skin. So again, we don't want to react to that because we don't want to be miscommunicating things to our parrots. You know, it's very easy to miscommunicate something to our parrot because we react in a certain way. They have their set lines of communication. They have their feathers to protect them from big bites. They know what they're doing. The techniques that people recommend like pinching beaks, how does that work? You know, a human pinching a beak doesn't really tell them anything, you know, all the other rubbish. So that's why it doesn't work, you know, when we do it, whereas it may do with them. And I felt it was very important to cover that. It's really important as a topic. So we have another question. Please help me. I have two birds and the female is scared of me and her mouth is opening, closing, and she's shaking. And so is the first. I just got... So don't, don't, don't worry. Please don't spam questions, by the way. I will get to all questions and I will always look. Uh, the questions, just like Jari Lou said, you know, if you spam too much, I just I will just not answer the question basically because it's rude to everyone else. But I will. So it's just your first day of getting your cockatiel, you know. So they're going to be really scared. Uh, oh, sorry, two birds. So sorry, I'm assuming it's cockatiels. So you have two birds. It's the first day of getting your bird, you know, they're going to be scared. It's like moving country for us. It's going to be scary. It's going to be worrying, and you really need to be worried. You need to be worried. They're going to be really worried. So what you need to do is work on passive bonding and let them settle into your house. Let them get used to how your house is. Take your time with it. So just be around your bird, you know. Don't force any interactions on them. Let them get settled in and then start interacting with them slowly. I've got videos on bonding with various parrots, you know, um, lots of different sort of content that I recommend you watch, you know. So watch my bonding. I don't know if you've got a cocktail con or whatever. Watch your bond, my bonding videos. Watch my passive bonding videos. That will sort of give you a starting point on what you should do. But my advice would be let them settle in. Make sure they've got food and water in there and just be around them and let them get used to you and your place. Then later on, you can start maybe offering them a treat through the bars, holding it there, let them get used to it, okay? So, Carrie, yeah, I actually want to talk a bit about Charlie today as well because the progress is actually improving more and for ne necessary reasons, it's having to sort of um, accelerate a little bit. Uh, so, lemon rice. Oh, sorry, let's try and catch up a little bit. I, I like tots pellets exactly for those reasons, and also the fact they're actually uh, cold pressed, which is very important in how they um, function in the, the body. But I've got videos on that as well. I end up talking about pellets for ages because it's a big topic for me. Uh, so, Amy, is it right that they are actually teaching us? We just need to listen, and understand what they're saying. So, of course, yeah, definitely, Amy. It's a communication thing between us and them, and it's really important to um, Un listen, watch them, observe them. Me and Sophie say that we should like um, record session. We try and record a session so we can watch the behavior. I constantly observe our parrots and just sit there watching them because I want to learn what they're trying to tell me. Scampy's a great example of that. He's beaking. You know, he likes to beak sometimes. And it's very important watching the context of it because sometimes he gets irritated and he'll beak and it'll be harder. Other times it'll be very soft because he wants just some wants something or he wants to be playful with me. And it's just observing and learning your individual parrot's quirks because there are species traits big wide species traits but it's also individual traits of your parrot and they will have nuances in their behavior which are really important to be aware of my mate don't need to apologize you know the chats you're free to talk about what you want basically um within reason no swearing or horrible stuff you know just nice stuff um so yeah it's heavy molting it's difficult ours are still sort of finishing the nails off 
And yeah, it's good to just give them a bit extra food, offering more washings, petting if you can. It's really important. Be super imp- uh, patient with your new bird. Exactly. You need to earn their trust. You know, it'll pay off with tons of trust. If you try to move too fast, it will take too long to earn their trust back. It's a, it's a valid comment from Lemon Rice there. It's very true. So Pylus Quaffle is always trying to communicate whether it's lifting her foot to say she wants to go a certain direction or landing on her backpack, my backpack. Oh, so her back and say she wants to go. So exactly. They're very smart and they will try and communicate with us, you know, either by flying something they want, gesturing. Conyers are like beacons for what they want. So pickles, I'll, I'll get her out in a second, actually. Pickles will be on my hand and she'll be like leaning and nodding and uh, gesturing where she wants to go. And it's just, it just, they will communicate with us. It's up to us to observe it, you know. We're the ones that have to do the work there, I'm afraid, you know. They're doing the work and it's, if it's not getting paid off, then it leads to, um, behaviors we don't want to see and biting that sort of thing let me get the conyers out or should i get the boy i'll get the boys out first actually and then i'll get the conyers out later so i think you guys are going to be fairly chill probably not going to want to get involved so you guys should be close so you can see do you want to say hello first and then i'll leave you just to relax you say hello you're gonna bark at them no you want to snack okay yeah just let them let them relax behind me if they want to come over and say hello that's fine by me too uh so yeah so before i move on to the next topic let's catch up again uh landing on her treats while she's going to certain whistles say she wants to train exactly you know it's funny how they will communicate with us and tell us what they want you see the boys popping back there it's a form of communication they're telling me i don't really want to be on you right now i'd rather be on there it's important to listen to that. Sometimes our birds will have to do slightly different things. Like, for example, if there's a danger situation, but that's where training comes in, you know. they want You want them to do something they don't want to do. You need to motivate them with a treat, and you need to train them to know that that's important. So that's the last topic of that side of things. So cages. Let's talk about cages a little bit. Um, bar spacing has cropped up quite a lot recently. Uh, people using inappropriate bar spacing... Again, it's been a requested video, something we, me or Sophie have to do, because bar spacing is important. Having appropriate bar spacing can lead to disaster. You don't have the right bar spacing in your cage. Uh, there's been some shocking content recently, which I don't want to go into, it's just stupid. Like, honestly, uh, that's the only word I can think of, stupid. Yeah. But the more important topic around cages... Uh, sorry, I'm read my really badly written notes. So... Again, another topic I find doesn't get covered a lot is our behavior around the cage. Um, like our behavior, our interactions inside the cage, how we use our hands, and just generally how we behave around our parrot's cages. If we're ultra excited around our parrot's cages all the time, we're almost encouraging um, overstimulation, overexcitement in them, which isn't very ideal. If we're quickly darting our hands in and out, we're messing around with them, and we're not really getting our parrots used to doing that, Again, that could be causing stress and sort of problems. I'm, I've been kind of mind of what well, actually it's Charlie that's made me really mindful of this recently because of how he behaves when I go in and out of the room. He's so overstimulated by me. I have to be quite mindful of how I walk past the cage. Now, I have to gauge whether I have to walk quickly past or I have to go nice and slow. When I'm near the cage, I will moderate my behavior. So I will be a bit softer in my tone. I will wait for his calm before I will reward him during training. I will generally try to take a more relaxed stance. And I think it's something we should all be mindful of around our birds' cages, because we could almost be accidentally fueling behaviors we don't want to see, such as overstimulation, such as biting, uh, almost making it a game when we're trying to get bowls out if your um, parrot's food guarding or nervous about them. you know. And these are things that we trained away, but they take time. So it's better to prevent it in the first place rather than having to go through all the steps in training to fix them, if you know what I mean. And yeah, this is just I thought was something that's occurred to me recently that was really useful to mention. I did a Patreon video recently about like in case trading with Charlie, which I'll talk a bit about later, actually. Uh, and it's paid by really valuable dividends with me and his relationship. I did have another topic on cages, and I don't know, it's just too many, too many, too many interesting topics with pellets and biting, and a lot of things that you guys are saying. Right. So that's all those topics covered. Um my, I couldn't say it better, really. It's their personal space. If they don't want to be bothered or interactive, they go to in a cage by choice and have them play. It's their safe space. That's exactly what it should be. It should be a safe space. It should be a place that they're happy, and it should be a place we don't really mess with unless we have to or we're doing things with. We try to mess with their cages while they're out, and that way, you know, we're not interrupting their time. And having in-cage time is really important and really, really valuable. So I'll, I'll uh, sort of 
change the order around a little bit. I've got a couple of questions people asked um, in advance, and then we'll go to topics because I think it will round things off before we just finish off of people's questions in chat. Right, so, so <laughs> again, it's back to pellets. I apologise. So this is something someone asked me recently. I said I'll just reply to you on this. Should I stop feeding my parrot pellets? And this was after they watched my videos on pellets. And I was like, um, you can if you want to. If you want to go for a whole food diet and just skip pellets, that's completely fine. But you don't have to. Um, there's some pellet brands I would recommend not feeding, but you know, um, stuff like Topsy is, is completely fine as part of a balanced diet. You know, I just don't think it should be the whole diet. Nothing should be the whole diet. No pellet is a complete diet, I'm afraid. So you want to have a mix of different things. And I'm not talking about the proportions that a lot of pellet brands give you of 80% pellets, 20% vegetables. We're talking about 10% pellets, 90% vegetables, fruit, you know, sprouted seeds, all the other stuff. That's what you want. You want pellets as a minority and you can keep feeding pellets if you want to that, and again this is what i think if i see science that proves it another in another direction i will change my opinion but as the way things are going and the more people are talking about it it seems to be that pellets are going to become a thing of the past unless pellet brands change how they do things all seeds bad pellets better than all seed this is this is the next better step basically and it simulates the natural environment the, the arguments against it tend to fall pretty flat when you look at just what birds eat in the wild. And if you can offer that, why would you want to offer them something else apart from our convenience? And if you talk about vitamin deficiencies and stuff like that, yes, you can maybe add a little bit of pellets in there if you feel that's necessary, or you could just provide it through giving them a choice of different foods and encourage them to eat them over time. So that's my opinion on it. Second question. Uh, can my bird cope if I go away on holiday? And now the person who asked me this question didn't give me really as much of a time scale. Can your bird cope if you go on holiday? Sure. But that isn't by leaving your bird in that cage or a little bit of extra food and then just going on holiday and leaving them there with that, with overfeeding. No, that they will not cope and they should not cope. They need someone coming to check in on them, ideally someone sitting for them so they can come in and look after them, interact with them. Even if it's just through the bars of the cage, it's really important they get the interaction because that will give them stimulation, give them fun. If they can come out with that person, even better. But those, those foods and water need to be changed regularly. They need that interaction. They need lots of fun. So yes and no, they will cope, but you need to put things in place. I've got a video about going on vacation and what I recommend, but you cannot just leave your bird in their cage on their own and swan off. No, please don't do that. And I hope you weren't even thinking of doing that. Right, so let's catch up with chat again, and then let's do the last couple of topics and then just open it up to whatever want, people want to talk about. Play with these guys a little bit because they seem to be getting bored of snacking. And then, yeah. Uh, lemon rice. Any tips for setting up a cage that is intended just for sleeping? So this is a difficult one to cover because from what we're seeing, and I don't necessarily think some parrots do really well with um, having a sleep cage and a daytime cage. Other parrots don't do very well with it. So generally, we prefer to have just one cage for them. But again, so if you want to set up a sleeper cage, um, have some toys in there. Make sure it's food and water accessible. Make sure it's set up in a similar way to their normal cage. So there's something fun in there. And don't make it uh, too hormone-inducing. Hormone uh, right. What, what, when, sorry, when training, can you overpraise? Can you overpraise when training? I think if you go on too long or you make too much of a big stink of it. So if you have a conya that's very reactive to like loud sounds and you're suddenly going, like, oh my God, yeah, woo, and you're going like that for a while, that could lead to overstimulation, it could be overpraise. Generally, if you're using praise as a bridge rather than a reinforcement, you want your praise to be pretty like uh, concise. So you just want to be like good, neutrally. If you're using it as a form of reinforcement, a secondary reinforcement, you can go in a little bit longer. So a few seconds are like, yay, well done, good job, woo. That's fine. Just don't go on for absolute ages or make your tone go really, really loud because that could um, almost scupper you. Bell pepper and bell, sprouted bell pepper or jalapeno seeds to be appropriate for a conya. So if so, Sophie, you still on the chat? Could you um, talk, answer Lemon Rice's question? Because I'm not sure, honestly, off the top of my head. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, parrot friends babysit. We, we need some more parrot friends for that. Oh, so, Amy, our parrots have actually hardly touched pellets now they have fresh fruit. Yeah, exactly. Ours are the same. Um, they, they would like to chew their Harrison's, which is why we provide them sometimes. That's not Harrison, sorry. Uh, their tops. They do like to chew their tops sometimes, so that's why we give them sometimes, but they much prefer the other foods. Right, so topics, and then we're done with topics, and we can just open it up to people. I didn't realize it would uh, be so interesting talking it with you guys. So let's talk about Charlie and Kipling in relation to me. So Sophie's been called up for jewelry duty recently, uh, soon. So that's really bad because currently 
both of us like to be there for their outings. And as you may know, some of you, my relationship with Charlie wasn't the best. You know, he doesn't really like me much. So I can't get Charlie out on my own. Um, so we've had to accelerate our sort of training regime a little bit, but it's going really well. You may have seen on the Patreon video how well um, using reinforcing the calm is going well. I've done another one for you patrons out there, which you'll probably enjoy coming up, where you can see how it's working in the cage. Now, we've sort of jumped a step with Charlie recently, and I think we may have mentioned it on behind the scenes as well. We're now doing, I'm doing training with Charlie outside the cage now regularly with less protection, and he's responding really well to it. You know, he's happy to target. He wants to target with me. He's gentle when he takes retreats, and that really does bode well for the future of me. So the next natural step is obviously just to get him stepping up onto a perch, a handheld perch with me. If I can do that and he's not getting overstimulated, that will give me the ability to get him out when Sophie's out. Because Olive's no problem for me. It's just Charlie. So if I can do that and this keeps going in the direction it is, it's going to be awesome. So it proves that what we're doing is working. We just need to start doing it a bit quicker and more regularly. That's the problem with having so many parrots. They all need their training. They all need their interaction. So sometimes you, know, you have to prioritize certain things. So I'll be really, I'll sort of give you updates when I can, maybe even film it a little bit, do a short about it because it's really good. But here's the, the training for calm and reinforcing for calm. He's working really well with him. And I've done a video on it because I think it's such an overlooked technique. I talked about it in my last live. Really, really useful. Really, really important. So that's really good. So I'll I'll finish off my uh, chit-chat, then I'll go back to the chat. Uh, Kipling's doing really well as well. So again, accelerating training. Kipling's doing much, much better with me in general recently. He, he's happy for me to pet him when he's out. He's do you want one over? We do. Chip just wants to train over there. Hello, big man. Uh, he's happy with me to pet him when he comes out. He regularly plays with me. There's no real biting behavior unless he gets really overstimulated. He just wants to have fun with me. And more recently, stepping up onto a perch with me, completely fine. Some a bit naughtiness, but generally doing very well. And that's going to... Oh, he's, he's gone back. Okay. He's generally doing much better. And I'm really proud of him. Louis as well. Louis just happy, is happy to sit on me now. And Louis is a very independent bird. He doesn't really like interactions unless there's treats involved. And he's just happy sitting on me now. And I'm really loving it. I'm really enjoying that he just wants to be and spend time with me. So Charlie and Kipling are coming on quite well. And we're going to try and capitalize on that to work on it and really push the boundaries with me. Because obviously, I had some bad experiences with both of them initially, which led to me wanting to protect myself. And I've been working hard to try and correct that. And it is paying dividends. It just takes longer sometimes, especially with rescues or rehomes. You can't always expect it to be a, a smooth ride, you know. Finally, um, for those of you who are on Patreon or who channel members, especially more for channel members, because I know you may not see you on Discord, we will be doing a Q&A with Jason, a, lot of pr a private exclusive Q&A with Dr. Jason Crean. If you are a channel member or a patron member, you please feel free to join. You can ask questions. I'll be doing posts on channel members page and on um, Patreon where you can submit your questions for him and ask live or have me deliver it if you don't want to. He'll be responding all live to all your questions. I think it's a really valuable opportunity because he's a lot busier these time, these days and you don't get the opportunity to talk to him. So if you guys are on channel memberships, look out for that post. It's a great opportunity to have your questions answered. I will be putting it up as a video on Patreon and for channel members. I may put it up live on YouTube as a podcast later on, but for the initial period of the exclusive. Well worth it. Keep it in mind and do ask your questions because it'll be lots of fun. I have a couple of questions. I'm going to be asking him as well uh, on various topics with diet because I find it always very useful to talk to him about it. Uh, so let's get, that's basically all my topics done now. So we just I'm just going to respond to chat and just chat. I'll pop these guys away in a little bit and get pickles and scampi out because they're very keen. I think people have already um, sort of talked about this bungee and co. Is it a good idea to sprout seeds? Uh, I, there are certain you can sprout seeds but there are certain better ones you want human grade ones for a start um so if you've got loads of videos i'm doing a video on soaking so if you don't want to take the full leap to sprouting you can maybe soak seeds to start with and soaking is very useful as well it's kind of a, a stepping stone to sprouting for both us and the birds it improves the flavor of the seeds it improves the nutritional profile but it's not full-blown sprouting well, Pathfinder Pony, it was nice seeing you. Um, thank you for joining us. I, I didn't think you'd say hello. If I didn't say hello before, hello and goodbye as well. The Shana, my, my, uh, oh, Man Mania does not want to go in the cage, start screaming, but eventually goes in what to do to let him stay in the cage. Um, so it's a long topic. So how can I do this very quickly? 
how can I right? So with the going in and out of the cage, you want to make going in the cage reinforcing. So always offer a high value treat for going in that cage. Do training in and around the cage as well. And also make sure that the cage isn't a rush experience. Don't rush them in and then get them out. So set some side some time before you want them to go into the cage, maybe 10 minutes. Do some training around the cage with targeting. Let them go in, let them come out again. Let them go in, let them come out. Make it less of a rushed experience because all too often when we're trying to get birds back in a cage, it's a rush, rush. We need to get them back in. We need to do something and it makes it stressful and they can sense it. So I've actually got a video on it as well worth watching uh, that explore those topics a little bit more. Uh, Sophie, once again, comes to the, the rescue with regards to sprouting. I wasn't sure with pepper, sprouting peppers. I think thought it was a no, but yeah. Uh, yes, multiple places offer sprouting seed mixes. Uh, commercial, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the reason, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Pioneer's Tales covered your question very well there. We're looking forward to it. Yep, I am as well. I'm hoping it's gonna be lots of fun. Screaming in the cage is another fix. The problem with screaming is I think I covered it in another live. It's a long topic, and I don't think I have enough time to dedicate to it now. Screaming is another fix. Uh, you can reinforce a calm, which is something I've been doing. You can play various games. Um, I'd watch my videos on that because it'll take me quite a while to talk about it. Basically, you don't want to be reinforcing the screaming. You don't want to be paying attention when they're screaming. You want to be paying attention when they're not screaming. You want to be waiting for interruptions in screaming. You want to be finding the reasons for the screaming. You want to be uh, eliminating the reasons for the screaming and watching very carefully. Uh, very reassuring. Glad. I mean, if we cover it very well, Curry, that's really good. Um, maybe just listen in because I've like for today, I I've had inspiration just from you guys, you know, talking to me and giving me your ideas about things. So it may be the case that you don't if you if you want to join the live stream, or sorry, not live stream, if you want to join the QA session, you don't have to answer ask a question. You could just be there and you can watch and enjoy it. There's no need to worry about that. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Happy to answer them. I'm going to pop these guys back in. I'm going to take this off because I'm getting really hot. And I'm going to get the conyers out. Oh, it's really, really warm. I'm going to put the fan on as well. Righty. Didn't really do much, did we? You just wanted to sit on there and preen. Just relaxing. You good boys. You want to bark at me? They will be having training later, by the way. I'm not just going to be like, that's not their outing. That's it. It's just a special thing. Because we're doing like, hello, monster. No. You're going to say hello to everyone. Oh, it's um, the anime was Jujutsu Kaisen. It's one of our favourites. We really like it. Hello. Are you trying to tell me? Are you, are you, post are you posturing? Are you nibbling me? Are you nibbling me? Are you posturing? Scampi. Watch It's really, it's quite good. The first season is really good, quite compelling. There's a movie. We started watching the second season. Not quite as good, but hopefully it'll improve. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, well worth watching. It's very good. What do you want? What, this is what I'm talking about. He's trying to tell me he wants something. So let's see if he wants to stand. And then we'll do a little bit of training later if he wants it. Do you want to stand? You don't. You don't want to stand. What do you want then? Would you like some training? You're going to wait for it. He was scared. Okay. So what have we got outside the window today that's scaring you? I'll leave you there for a second and I'll come get you. Laura, thank you very much. I love, again, I like the little emojis. They always please me uh, in a very childish way. I love them. Thank you very much. The naughtiness was not expected, but much appreciated as usual. Thank you for joining as well. I hope you found this like, useful as a live. Uh... Um, there should be like a button or something like a little dollar button at the bottom, um, I think. But honestly, if you if you like want more content, it's probably better to sign up to our Patreon, one of them at a low level, because we give you a lot more stuff, a lot more perks. It's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to do it, we don't expect it, you know. We do appreciate it, but I never expect it. So yeah, there's that little dollar sign or just um, be a channel member or something. <laughs> Yep, yep, Carrie, I'll talk about... Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about, a big topic. So I'll talk about that in a second, Carrie. Give me a second. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Birdmaster, what's your opinion on homemade stuff? Because everything I have for my birds is homemade to my cage and toys. So most homemade stuff's great. We always recommend homemade toys, like paper, cardboard, you know, all sorts of things, as long as it's safe and not plastic-coated. 
certain woods woods are certain safe as well. Homemade's completely fine. You know, we love homemade stuff. Do you want, oh, you're still snacking. What about what do you want? Did you want to go up there? Anyway, sorry, yeah, homemade is really generally good. You just have to make sure you're using um safe stuff, basically. You know, there are things, some unsafe things. So he's got his master list we keep referring to. But we love homemade. We've done loads of DIY tour videos. Some of our fav parrots' favorite uh, foraging activities, toys are homemade. It's nothing to say that you know store bought is bad. You know, especially if there's all natural. I've I bought a load of stuff from Northern Parrots recently, which I'll do a little unboxing for at some point. Couldn't order as much as I wanted, but I got a few bits and pieces, which are quite nice. So yeah, um, nothing wrong with homemade at all. So Carrie, um, we're keeping tanks uh, enclosure in the bedroom. So all of our Bugs are going to be in the bedroom and obviously away from the birds. Mostly for the poor bugs sake, because these guys will hassle them. And then we haven't got much space left. This is basically the bird room and the work room. It's just the desks, a couple of desks, my TV in the corner. And that's, that's all we've got space for. It's all about the birds. Um, but um, I've decided I'm going to make a separate channel for my um, invertebrate content. Um, I've sort of we made it already. I'll sort of announce it and I'll drop a link in Discord. I'll drop a link on everywhere just in case you're interested in that content because we're getting more, we're getting more bugs as well. And we're going to kind of max out our space on them because we really like them. It's something we've always loved, both of us. And then we're just going to do content on them. We're learning an awful lot. I, Sophie probably knows a lot more about them than me. I have some knowledge of them, um, mainly different types, different, different types to Sophie's, thankfully. She knows a lot more about um, tarantulas, which I love. Um, and other bits and that, but yeah, so we'll be sort of sharing our knowledge and trying to put out content about not just educational content but cute content as well, and what we're learning about them as we go to try and dispel myths because in the parrot world, loads of myths, it's the same in the insect and invert world and arachnid world. So, yeah, um, I'll drop you a link when I can. Let's see what I say. Okay, why don't you let him? Why don't you say hello and you let him have some and you can some say hello. So lemon rice, you can offer mealworms. Um, it's best to let them soak in the sun. That's the best one. That's the only one I really recommend because they would eat some in the wild. Are you going to wave or are you going to be lazy? So yes, um, that's where we started. We've got some mealworms for our birds and then we can double up by feeding the insects and inverts them as well. It's really, really cool. I mean, most of those look okay. If you can, I'd recommend sisal for... for um, for your rope perches and stuff, there it's much better material, much safer. You won't um risk any impact, but if they aren't chewing it, it's not really an issue. Uh shredded paper, cardboard egg cartons, all very good. Why am I rewarding you for doing nothing? You can at least do something for me. Most of that stuff seems sounds pretty good to me. Cupcake paper we use because it's uh, mostly food, natural food dyed. Um, we use paper straws as well, which aren't plastic coated. They love actually love those, They're really, really big fans. There's something out that window that's um, scaring them. You can do something for me. You gonna try and spin on me? You can do something else for me. Again, guys, I'm going to be rounding this off in about roughly ten minutes or slightly less. I'll do some behaviors with pickles if she's willing. You gonna watch? What oh, smart girl? You're so good. I don't even have to cue her anymore. She just—I oh, just literally make the motion, and she does no verbal cue necessary. This little one. You can do it again. You should. Um, I think. Oh, no, 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 I'm trying to work out which videos I put out, which I haven't, because I've got a lot of master lists. I've, I've started batch filming because we find it less stressful and less annoying. So I batch film a load, and then it, instead of having a stress spread out, it's just one day of stress. Everything's filmed. I can edit it up and do it. Yeah, well worth it. Um, so yeah, I've got a video on that. We love paper straws. Okay, we're gonna keep flipping. I didn't ask you for that, did I? Really, though. If I ask you, will you do it? You will. Uh, okay, we've got some questions. So let's, um, we have to stop flipping now. So have you ever noticed your birds going through phases where they stop whistling, saying that are known phrases for a pit? Yes, actually, yes. Um, the boys would say Alexa constantly, and then suddenly they stopped saying it, and then Fish recently started saying it again. Um, some of the other vocalizations can almost be seasonal. I wouldn't, it's a bit anecdotal, so I wouldn't say that's a fact, but I reckon they do change, and it depends on your individual parrot's personality. It is quite interesting how that ha does happen, though, and yes, we have experienced it. Uh, Terry, do you still use substrate in the bottom of your case? Heck yeah, we, we've got substrate in all of them. Um, we love substrate for our parrots. Um, it's just generally really good for them. You know, they love playing in it, loving lots, having fun with them. What do, you, do you want to go on my head? Is that what you're... Yeah, you want to go on my head, not my shoulder. Um, so yeah, it's just generally really cool how they play in substrate. And people often argue against substrate, is it dirt, is dirty and stuff? It's no dirtier than bars. Bars are dirtier. And they also say that it causes hormonal behavior. The thing I like about substrate is it doesn't necessarily cause the hormonal behavior on, its, on itself. 
But if you have substrate, then you can remove it for a period to shock your bird out of hormonal behavior. So we find it very useful in that way as well. Uh, so it's, oh, what you mean pickles? I, yeah, she's a real sweetie, this one. In fact, all of them are anyway. Right, I'm going to have to fetch them and make sure they're okay. Give me a second. Right, you landed there. You, I know, I know. It's a big, scary pigeon. It's big and scary. Do you calm down up there now? Can calm down up there? I'll leave them up there to set up because they're going to be more relaxed because it's higher up. So, yeah, for some reason, like, we've got this massive pigeon that keeps flying on the old satellite dish outside this property. It just sits there, and it's, they're just not decent to it. They don't, they don't care about the magpies, but that pigeon is a disaster. It's really annoying how it keeps going up there. So, uh, where was I? Uh, are there any other bugs aside from mealworms that conyers can eat? I think mealworms are the best choice. Honestly, I wouldn't give them other bugs. In the wild, they would eat other ones, but I can't actually say to you what they would eat. Charlie has an opinion. Sophie, are you still there? Sorry? Are you still there? Could you cover, could you just put it cover the, um, when Jason thing exactly is covering it in, in the chat, yeah, chat so that. it's actually written down? Also about the bugs. You can, you can technically feed them things like crickets and stuff, but... I don't think it's worth it. No. The, the benefit is yeah. the best benefit about mealworms, and why specifically they're the good choice. They're high in protein, and if you let them sit in the sun, they absorb vitamin D. So your parrot gets better benefit of vitamin D. They also start easier to eat. Charlie, yeah, Charlie gets very excited when Sophie comes in, but I thought I'd ask her to just put the details in there because it's just easier if it's written out for everyone while I'm chatting. Uh, it's, I find it difficult to chat on this laptop while I'm talking. Uh, are you guys happy? Are you guys are fluffed up, so I'll leave you guys there. You're happy. Uh, bamboo branches. Uh, He's gone now. He's flown off. Is it safe to put bamboo branches in my conyers cage to perch on? Um, uh, depends where you source it from, really, and if it's clean. Uh, so yeah. You know, we um, so we actually did the nutrition course is actually live, by the way. You can buy it now on our website. It's pre-recorded, so you can watch that um, now, Lemon Rice. So if you go to our, our website, it should be a link to actually uh, a link to buy it, so you can actually watch it. I love the birdie chaos. Normally, it can be when the scream is going. It can be a bit irritating as it is to everyone, but I try to keep it calm for lives, not just for my benefit and not just because I want to show off. Oh, I'm such a great trainer, but it just helps me think and focus because. For me, it's, you know, it can be a bit difficult to stay focused on these and talk for over an hour when someone's screaming. So we try and keep it nice and calm. So that's why, um, yeah, I think Pickles wants that she's bobbing. So give me a second, I'll go in there. Hello, Angel with Wings. Welcome. Nasty, not nasty. Uh, a perception. I have female comments. Would it encourage nasty behavior? I know what you mean. The answer is generally no, it would not. Um, they'll probably be scared of it initially once they get used to it. If you do see hormonal behavior, why are you... Why are you taking out the fish? Just because it's a pigeon. If you do see hormonal behavior, you just phase it out for a bit, bring it back in. But generally, as a rule, I have found from my own um, sort of like just watching our birds and watching other people's birds, it does not cause an issue. Uh, yes, you can ask a quick question, Angel Wings. This is probably the best time for a quick question because I'm going to be rounding off very shortly. I mean, for another five minutes, then I'm, we're basically going to call it, call it a day on this one. Excuse me, I'm a little drinky. You can actually have a little bit of this one. You are allowed a little bit. I just want to say for you this time. I don't normally let her, only if it's like natural juice. Do you want me to give some scampi some? It's not fair that you're getting some, he's not. Do you want some as well, Scrambler? I bet you're thirsty after that flying around. Have a little bit more, and that's it. You're not getting too much. A little bit more. Come on. <laughs> you silly boy. One last try, because I need to focus on what I'm doing. You kind of want it, but you don't. Okay. Silly baby. Oh, Cl oh just come back and it's naughtiness at Klaus. Thank you for the flying pair. It's one of my favourites. Thank you very much for that and being naughty. It's, again, highly appreciated by both of us, because it basically funds extra goodies for these guys. Um, and if you're, in case you're wondering, because I, know I had someone call me out on this, like, well, how did you buy that television of yours? I fund my stuff by selling my stuff. I had to sell a lot of stuff to afford that thing. A lot of painted armies, which I took a lot of time painting. 
Right, you're safe. You're safe. Right. Um, a lot of painted stuff to buy that. That's how I fund my stuff. I fund other stuff through bird stuff through other ways. So yeah, don't. That was that was very naughty when I said that. I don't know something else. I did. It's, it's that Can pigeon. It's that pigeon again. Yes, the course. Um, the course is good. We would obviously recommend it. So yeah. Yeah, thank you guys, you know. Um, again, so last minute questions. I've got about maximum five minutes because these guys keep um, getting agitated. So I don't want to put them in right now. I want them to be nice and relaxed when they come in. So any last minute questions, feel free. Um, I'll see if I can cope while Charlie's shouting. Hello. <laughs> Pickles P. Pickles P. Yes, me. Can say it an up close enough. Hello. It's me, baby pickles. Pickles, 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 pickles. I think she just wants to be on her head, but something keeps scaring her, so she keeps wanting to come off. I bet. I bet all the noise. I mean, they all get excited when the noise. So, Angel Wings, let's try and get your let's try and do your not get your question out of the way. Blimey, that's really rude. Let's try and do your question before I run out of time. You've helped me before, so hopefully you can help me again. I've just got a little teal. Already have one. How do I get new, the new one used to me? He's fine with my teal, just not, I presume, just not with me to not get on great. So it's just the same sort of exercises, really. Um, just do your usual bonding work with the other teal. If they're in separate cages, that makes it easier for you. They're obviously going to be nervous, and they're probably going to gravitate towards another cockatiel, because if you think they're very young, so they're going to be looking for their flock members, and they're going to be um, basically wanting to be with flock. So you have to do all the same exercises, all the same positive reinforcement, all the same work. If you can maybe train with your other teal while they're out in front of them so they can see and learn by association that you are a good person, they see your teal interacting with you, you and then the other one's like, oh, this person's cool, they're getting treats, so maybe I will risk getting um, involved with them. There are quite a few ways, but it's basically the same sort of techniques you'd use. You know, The only difference is, again, using your current teal to your advantage and trying to encourage a flock mentality. Eating with them is another good one. But yeah, lots of positive reinforcement, lots of um, lots of passive bonding, lots of relaxation, lots of fun with them. Carrie, it's really a kind of you to say, um, we're grateful for all of you guys, honestly. You know, it's really helpful, especially you guys on Patreon, like because you know, it basically carries us through when there's difficulty. So we're very grateful for all of you and just the kind words of support, you know, because Sometimes it is thankless doing this sort of stuff. You know, you're putting out information, you, you get grief like Sophie did. But a lot of the time, just hearing what you guys say to us is sort of like boosts us up. So we're really appreciative of all you guys as well. Basically, that was the gist of it. Well, um, it's just some basically some juice. Um, what's one of the natural juice? Like diluted orange, wasn't it? I just put some orange juice on, like tangerine juice, and just put some water in it. I don't like, I'm a bit weird. I don't like full blown juice. I like to have it diluted with water. I'm not sure why. I just think I just prefer the taste of it, to be honest. We do have some dilutes, but I don't really let them have that because I, um, cause it's probably got more sugar in it than I'd want them to have. You give them natural cranberry, don't you? Know? Yeah, they yeah, love their cranberry, so I'm quite a big fan of that as well. Scary. Both in the same cage, and the new one won't stop screaming. Has going up on me now. He's got a friend. It's more difficult when they're in the same cage, especially if you've introduced them straight into the same cage with the other one. Um, again, it's, it's trying to... What it's, it's going to be the same exercises and... It's just going to be a bit more difficult now because you kind of missed an opportunity there when they were separated. But it's not impossible by a long shot. It's just the same pro process, you know, and you may have to re, um, re bond with your other teal if they're getting funny about it. No, no, no. When I saw about it, there's no need for pitching in. As I said, kind words are, are most appreciated by us. You know, uh, liking and commenting is really appreciated. Sharing our content as well, because YouTube loves to not share our content. Can I give everyone a top tip to help us? Oh, go, go. Sophie's got a top tip. The top tip, if you really want to help our channels and help our videos get seen by more parrot owners, the current YouTube algorithm is for you to watch more than one video. So if you finish watch watching one of our videos, watch another one straight afterwards. I don't know why, but that is exactly what the YouTube current algorithm is, as well as, you know, liking and subscribing and all that kind of stuff. But that YouTube says, oh, they, lo they want to stay on YouTube longer on this channel. So yes, yeah, so you can do that. So yeah, <laughs> if you watch one video, try and watch another one straight after, even if it's only a bit of it, preferably longer than a minute because that affects uh, things as well. So yeah, we, we appreciate all support, you know. Um, we're not, we don't really want to be money grubbers and constantly go saying give, 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 because it's, it's not everyone can, you know, it's, it's rude. You know, we appreciate people who do, but at the same time, we don't expect it. And that's what we try to make clear. And being British, it kind of makes us sound very awkward and get all flustered and funny. So, yeah, enough of that topic. 
Right. So a couple of couple last minutes. Any final questions anyone has? Any final comments? Uh, anything you'd like to sort of have uh, featured in the future in the live stream? Because you gave me some great ideas already. I will try and do a UV video if I can. I'm probably away from the birds just in case. But yeah, um, all sorts of things. Can you show us the stand behind you? Yeah, I can. I can probably pick it up partially. Oh, let me try and move. Uh. Do you see that? So basically, it's got a, a sort of. It's got. We put paper and substrate in it for Mr. Forager on. And then we've got a cross stand with wheels on the bottom. It's got uh, stepping up purses. One of them is really wobbly now because we've had it for quite a while. And some bowls. Um, honestly, we love this stand. It's very useful, but we want more space so they can have more activities because it's just the stand. Yes, most of the time we do activities for them. We have to set them up on a table or on the floor. We would love just to have a permanent sort of like play stand for them to just really enjoy. Chop sprouting and chopping marathons. That's good. Yeah, chip and fish. Thank you, Angel Wings. Thank you, Mr. Teeny. We we try. <laughs> what <laughs> Klaus? So I I've um so Mr. Teeny gave me some inspiration for this as well. I've got um We'll see. It's the, basically my next my next parody video is planned. I just haven't filmed it. And I've got some funny ideas, including uh, some competition between pellet brands in the video. So I will film it when I get the chance uh, and I will put it out. I just don't want to rush them because I don't want people getting bored of them. I want you guys to just really enjoy them and have lots of fun with them. So yeah, um, there will be more parody videos about wild organic pellets and all sorts of things. And hopefully you guys will find it entertaining. <laughs> Sorry, vitamin, lots of vitamin R and all the other all the other home homegrown ingredients. Right, I think it's a good time to start wrapping this up now. I think we've come to a natural end. It was really nice to see everyone really act super active in the chat and generally talking lots. It was lots of fun to just interact with you. Again, thank you all very much for joining. Um, Sophie says thank you. Charlie says thank you, but very thanks, loudly. Nice Scampy's been sat relaxing up there, and Pickle says goodbye as well. So thanks for joining me, everyone. Take care, and as I usually say, see you later.